Korean history would be best defined as a continuous struggle. It is a nation that throughout history has been attacked, vassalized, invaded, colonized, and literally torn apart by a war that has never ended. Throughout all of this, how has Korea been able to maintain its identity? To answer that, we must understand the story of the first Korean. Introducing Tangun Bangu. See, here I am now by myself, I'm talking to myself. The story goes, Hanun, the son of the heavenly king, wished to descend from heaven and live in the human world. His father chose Daebaksan, now called Baekdusan, as the perfect spot for a city of gods. They called it Shinshi, which means city of gods. A bear and tiger who were living nearby approached Hwanu and asked that he turn them into humans. He accepted their request, on the condition that they eat only garlic and mugwort for 100 days and stay within a cave. On the 21st day, the tiger couldn't take it anymore and ran away. The bear, who was able to persevere, was transformed into a human woman. Understandably, she had trouble finding a husband, so under a sandalwood tree she prayed to Hwanung again, who turned himself into a man, and together they bore a son. They named him Dangun Wangul, the Sandalwood King. In the year 2333 BC, Dangun established his kingdom and called it Joseon, which is most often translated to the land of the morning calm. He ruled the kingdom for 1500 years, and then left the throne to become a mountain god. It is through the Dangun myth that the Korean people have been able to claim over 4,000 years of unique history and culture, as well as unite under a common ethnic identity, with Dangun being the progenitor. While there is no doubt that the Joseon dynasty, now called the Gojoseon dynasty, was real, though the Dangun myth is controversial at best, Confucian scholars ignore the myth as being baseless, though there are other interpretations. The union of the bear and Hwanung perhaps symbolizes the joining of two tribes, one more advanced and one that worshipped the bear. The tiger could also refer to a tribe that was either cast out or destroyed. The name Dangun Wangum can also be understood as shamanistic ruler, denoting a king that was in charge of both religion and politics. Living to the unlikely age of 1908 suggests that there were multiple rulers with the same title of Dangun Wangum. Though this, of course, is just one interpretation. The oldest surviving version comes from the Samgul Kyusa, a compilation of Korean legends collected by the Buddhist monk Ilyong in the 13th century. This was during the time of the Mongolian invasions of Korea, and from here we can notice a clear rise in reference to the Dangun myth and the strengthening of Korean nationalism. It was seen again during the Japanese invasions of the 16th century, again in the 17th century Qing invasions. It was especially strong during the Japanese forced occupation of the early 20th century, and again even through the Korean War and into the modern era with democracy movements and the financial crisis of the 1970s and 90s. Each time, terms like descendants of Dangun were increasingly used. This strengthened the notion of Minju, or an ethnic group, an exclusive family united by a single ancestor, the legitimate inheritors of the Korean culture and land. Dangun has become the center of Korean identity. During Japanese occupation, religions incorporating the Dangun myth also emerged, such as Daejongism and Chondoism, seeing Dangun being worshipped as a god. The traditional Chinese calendar was replaced with the Dangi system that begins from Dangun and the founding of the Gojoseon dynasty. October 3rd of each year is the Korean Gaejeonjeol or the National Foundation Day, a public holiday celebrating the day when Dangun ascended the throne and began Korea's history. Even North Korea is a follower of the myth, claiming to have discovered Dangun's tomb, though of course they don't allow outsiders to examine it. It might seem ridiculous how a simple myth has had such a powerful impact on a culture, but this is true for almost every civilization in history. Just like the bear within the story, generation after generation of Korean people have found the power to persevere and overcome every obstacle put in front of them. And I think that's pretty cool. So thank you for watching another one of my videos. Don't forget to like, comment, and definitely subscribe. If you like this video, why not check out one of my more recent ones? As always, thank you so much for watching. I'm Wukong, and goodbye.